We have a repot today on a beautiful sunny day in southern Spain and our candidate is Area hyacinthoides, which is a species that can be found growing in India, China, throughout Southeast Asia, down to northern Australia. One of the interesting characteristics of this orchid is that, while it is an epiphyte or lithophyte, the roots of this orchid actually have the look of being those of a terrestrial orchid. It's super interesting. So, area. A genus I do not see often on the interwebs, maybe because of its needs, or the fact that the blooms are short-lived, or perhaps that the fragrance is not very pleasant. I can't speak on the fragrance because mine doesn't exude a fragrance because I don't have the right conditions for it. Maybe it's a combination of all of those factors that we don't see areas around on the interwebs often, because it likes high humidity all year round, and it likes to stay nice and warm with high humidity all year round. The generic epithet is from the Greek, Arion, which translates to wool, and that refers to the woolly appearance of the flowers and pedicels of some species. I bought my area because of the name Hyacinthoides, it was deemed fragrant, and I assumed that the name was given to the species because of the fragrance it would have. I happen to love the fragrance of hyacinth. I lucked out though, but I'm doing my best to grow this orchid as best as possible with the conditions I can provide, which are contrary to what she prefers for at least four to five months of the year. She looks nasty and all the spotting is because of the cold temperatures and the dry tips on the leaves are a result of low humidity. My area is also deficient in magnesium, something that happens during the winter months, during which I'm super conservative about fertilizing and supplementing. It's wonderful to have you here on the patio. Thank you so very much for your company. While I wrestle with this orchid trying to save my pot, would you take a moment to like the video? And if you're here for the first time and not subscribed, I would also appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel tremendously and I hope I'm not asking too much. I just don't want to be greedy here, but your support would be greatly appreciated if you liked the video and subscribed. Thank you so very, very much. As much as I'm tempted <laughs> to just up pot her, I do want to create a little bit air in the root ball so we're just gonna go for it her root system is vigorous there are some active roots which is great they are just starting at the base of the one pseudobulb which was growing throughout the winter months again conservative on the calcium the magnesium fertilizing hence deficiencies but you can see the cold wall left a mark on the pseudobulb where this was growing there's a real indicator of the cold temperatures the wald had and the pseudobulb didn't appreciate it very much. But at least I've got active root growth in one area, hoping that there will be more. And you know what? As I was preparing for this repot, I went through my list of, you know, plan ahead, where I did all my pot counts, what I would need, which orchids need to be addressed most urgently, area being one of them. And I had designated her for a 17 by 17 square self-watering pot. <laughs> when I went to get that pot out and then looked at the orchid in comparison, I was like, um, yeah, this is not going to work for the next two or three years. <laughs> so we are at a 21 by 21 centimeter pot at the moment, unless she falls apart on me, which I, I don't want to do that. But I do have some pseudobulbs in the middle that I could try to get out. Not sure if I would be successful at this point. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. This is what I meant when I said these are roots that appear to have terrestrial characteristics. They are like a wire, very wiry and incredible. And this is an epiphyte or a lithophyte. I think, I normally save my microfibers, but I think there is a limit. <laughs> but we have active root growth. Let me just bring it in closer in case that's not visible. You see right there. So yeah, anyway, so I have a 21 by 21 centimeter self-watering pot now out, ready to go with microfibers and everything. But we'll see how we'll, we get along. 
if she were to fall apart on me, then oh dear. Then we'll go to 17 by 17 as was intended and planned all along. But if she doesn't, then I'm putting her straight into a much bigger pot. I don't want to address this orchid for another two, maximum three years. Judging by her root system, it would be great if she just got a bigger pot, got more air around those roots. And it seems that being able to remove the dead pseudobulbs is relatively easy. You <laughs> just pull on them. Here's another one. <laughs> it's a bit wet now because she was soaking in Epsom salts. Because of her deficiency, I thought, yeah, just put her into Epsom salts straight away. So this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I thought I could just twist it out. So let's see what we're going to do. What I also can't forget, I don't want to get ahead of myself here because <laughs> I'm already thinking in my mind, oh goodness, look at the lecker. Look at having to clean this lecker. <laughs> I'm distracting myself before even addressing what I've got in front of me. You see, I even forgot my train of thought now. Yeah, what I don't want to do is just rip on this orchid. So we do need to get in there and chop out some roots. Some pseudobulbs. Hello, Nina. Come on, get with the program. Just because it's a sunny day doesn't mean you can't stop concentrating. You know, I have a hard time during the winter concentrating. It really, really affects my brain when the temperatures drop. And I kid you not, I'm not, I'm not being silly, but it just happens. I, I, I close up, I tighten up. And then I really have to concentrate on what I'm doing, especially when I'm filming. So it would appear that while I find it even more stressful to film during the winter, <laughs> just because it's a nice day and it's beautiful and sunny, and without the umbrella, the area can handle it. It's fine. I'm not concentrating. <laughs> so <laughs> if I lose my train of thought throughout this video, sorry for that bark, that was king. And I don't circle back on a thought. Well, let me know in the comments, okay? Correct me, check me, and make sure that I qualify what I'm saying, what I'm doing, and all that, okay? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to have to go in with a chop-chop. This orchid is going to still have roots, but not many after we're done with her. Oh boy, I hope this is in frame because it's a mess. <laughs> Big mess. We're going to get in there though. I know I just talked about the Epsom salts. <laughs> so we got that one done. We got that mentioned. Oh yeah. Anyway, let me get up and see where I'm going. Could be that there's a lecker bead in the way. Wow. Considering the pseudobulbs are soft, here we go. Here she comes. Let's get up in there. Okay, that was a lecker bead. That hurt. I've got carpal tunnel issues, inflammations in both my wrists. While I don't feel them every day, especially after the winter with schlepping the orchids in and out every day, they, the flare is worse, so I'm glad it's coming up to warmer temperatures at night now that I can leave some of the orchids outside. I'm not schlepping them back in and out every day, all of them. Always have to be mindful about my Demophorcus lowii though, <laughs> I keep forgetting. And then when I'm at the computer, I'm like, ah, no, this one can't be outside. And I just drop everything, rush and go, go get it. Okay. I know that this doesn't look too hip in here, but it's just the way she grows. She has pseudobulbs, grows she's around the pseudobulbs, much like an oncidium would. But the roots, they don't feel oncidium-like. They are really, really, in my opinion, super duper terrestrial feeling. And they look it too. So all this can go, whether it is alive or not. We're going to do a great little Figaro cleanup. She may object to this happening because her blooming should be starting right about now, so to speak. But her blooming doesn't last long, as I mentioned in the opening. She doesn't have long-lasting blooms. She doesn't have very fragrant blooms. Look, I bought her also because of the name, yeah? Hyacinths. I love that fragrance, but 
this this species also i i was attracted to her i wasn't aware that the blooms weren't long lasting but i was attracted to her because the blooms looked like lily of the valley and i used to live in a property that had like an estate kind of garden i used to have a massive garden with all kinds of different microclimates in it in germany meanwhile not in kenya and i had a little like a foresty area I dug out a 21 square meter pond with all different levels and everything that then bordered that little foresty area. It was so cute. And I had lily of the valley in the forest and snowbells and all that wonderful stuff that comes out. And the fragrance of lily of the valley is just adorable, delicious, love it. It was the only, only flower in my wedding bouquet back in the day. Just a beautiful bunch of lily of the valley. And that is what her blooms remind me of. So I thought, hey, double double win here. I get blooms on an orchid that looked like lily of the valley, but smell like hyacinths. <laughs> well, apparently the areas are not renowned for their beautiful fragrance. Like I said, I wouldn't know. Mine just doesn't have the fragrance. I think my conditions are too controversial for it. It's too dry. Some orchids, like their fragrance to come out because of the humidity not just because of temperature or light and i believe that this one if it had higher humidity it would be fragrant and i could be able to tell you if it's pleasant or not but at this point i can't there is a pseudobulb right in here sorry car passing by right in here that is super soft i would like to get that out but i don't want to compromise this side of the orchid Let's see what we can do if we come at it from above. And she's starting to get loose at the other end, so I gotta be careful. Very, very tight growth habit, as you can tell. And would be a beautiful orchid, even just for her beautiful leaves. If, you know, leaves could stay beautiful, but mine, mine won't. Anyway, that was a misjudgment on my part when I bought her. I was always thinking Spain is hot, Spain is hot. <laughs> I didn't realize how cold our winters get until I got my orchids into this home, this property, let's just say, and until I couldn't afford to pay for heating anymore. And that's when I realized, dang, this is not good. This is not a good climate to be growing orchids unless you can supplement with heating and lights then it wouldn't be so bad. And it wasn't for the first couple of years. But now, mm -mm. so I'm hoping I got the pseudobulb. Here we go. Yay. Well, thankfully, it's just a normal deterioration of a pseudobulb. It's not like rot is spreading to the rest of the orchid. And of course, now this piece is all super duper wobbly. Huh. Should I be so bold and aggressive to get in there and get more gunk out? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. This orchid is vigorous enough, she says. And then she'll prove me wrong further down the line. Oh, well. We're going to do what we can, what we normally do with other orchids. When we do a root ball cleanup, we're going to follow procedure. And if that means two pieces in a pot, so be it. I don't grow my orchids for shows. Meanwhile, there are none <laughs> in my area here. But uh, you see, she wouldn't qualify now that I've split her. If I took her to a show and put two pieces in a pot, that wouldn't, she wouldn't qualify for that. But I'm more comfortable doing it this way. I'll show you the pieces if I remember. I hope to remember once I've cleaned my hands. I do not like dirty hands, I'm sorry. So I know that what I'm doing is causing dirty hands and la di da, but I'll, I'll continue with the root cleanup and I'll clean my hands and then we'll look at the pieces a little bit more closely. But I'm liking the fact that I'm in here and now I can get rid of this one, even though it's still firm, it won't be for long. So while we're here, we're gonna deal with it. I can see that over the years, she seems to have a little bit of a climbing characteristic, which is interesting. I never noticed that before.
discovering as I go with you. All right, we don't want to be too mad with the roots, removing the roots. But whatever it could be chunky in here that is going to go lower in the pot and cause an issue, it's coming out. And with that, dead roots are coming out as well. Huh. I mean, the cleanup is going better than expected. <laughs> Everything's coming out pretty easily. The lekker cleanup is not what I'm looking forward to. No, not at all. <laughs> What a mess. What a mess. Oh my goodness. I just hope it comes off the beads easily. <laughs> Please. All right. So I think that's all I want to do with her for now. I think we're good. I do need to give her a little bit of a spray down though. Very intrigued by the feel of the roots. Very wiry. Okay, I think we're good. I think our best course of action is to dunk her first before spraying down the base. See what debris we can get rid of. Sorry if this all goes now weird with the camera. Let's see what comes out of a few little dunks. Now we can take out the salt buildup lecker as well. We'll deal with that. I'll give her a good shake upside down. See? Roots. That's great. Let me clear out a little bit more of the base, give them more access to the media straight away. See, these haven't grown to complete size, so I'm not expecting any blooms right there. It's really dirty and nasty in here, doesn't she? Let's see if we can dislodge any of the lacquer. <laughs> nope. Be kind to your orchids. Be gentle. <laughs> Here we are roughing it up. Let's get the other piece. And we have some roots also coming on this piece. Awesome. You know what comes next if you're familiar with my channel? All this gets cleaned up. <laughs> All this. And we'll be back with a repot because I also have to consider a support for this orchid because of you see how her leaves are flopping. I want to be able to try and grow them kink free and they do kink quite easily. So there'll be a little bit of a um, craftiness going on. We'll see what I come up with. Lots of water. Four microfibers are in here. This orchid never likes to dry out no matter the time of year. So it's a little bit complicado when I am in the colder months of the year for me. But anyway, so here's my thing. I could put a support into the middle and then have a wire going around holding the orchid leaves up, trying to make sure that I don't get any kinks in the future. When the leaves form and they flop over, I don't like that. It's a shame. However, with that root system, the next repot would be, ugh, I don't know. So I've got this wire and what I'm thinking of doing is creating a single piece of wire that is the stake into the pot and then curls around the orchid with that stake. That's the two options I've got going in my head at the moment. The question is, will the orchid stay upright in the pot without needing to be tied more strongly, more securely, because if that's the case, then I need the white support as opposed to the wire. So I don't want to lose my microfibers and fiddle around trying to find them. I have them going up the pot, just so that the wicking will distribute evenly throughout the pot and not just at the bottom, seeing as the pot is so tall. There we go, that's the first load of lecker. Let's get the pieces and see what we're up against. We've got a growth habit 
in all directions on this orchid, so it's not like you can say, yeah, well, you know, mm -mm. all directions. So we can, can we can respect that in some way, shape, or form. Think like that. She's already up against the edge of the pot over there, but only for, yeah, that would last two years. Yeah, that would last two years. But then what is going on here with this piece? Oh my goodness. Where's my daughter when I need her? <laughs> this piece can go maybe tucked in here, more like. A bit. Yeah, I know you can't really see what I'm doing with all the leaves in the way, but I think that's how I'm going to keep her and try and fill around with Lekka as best as possible while constantly moving her around because it's not 100% ideal. Let me see if I can get you in lower because maybe the vista down there is a little bit more, makes a little bit more sense. We'll see. If all this looks horrible, then we're just going to do a jump cut to the end result. <laughs> I'm trying to get the Lekka to help me hold her in place. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. Yes, I'm liking the look of this. Strategic placement of Lekka results in my third hand. <laughs> I don't like the clicks I'm hearing because that means I'm smushing the leaves, which is not nice. There'll be bruises and dents. Oh, well, they're spotted already, but you know, still. So because of her climbing nature, she looks a little bit low in the pot, but I'm okay with that because then I can observe the next growth and the next growth. And if need be, I can fill around with Lekka to protect any roots that come out to get straight into the media. Seeing as I don't have a lot of humidity, that has to happen straight away with this orchid. The roots have to find the media. So I've given myself Depending, right here it's a bit of a tight squeeze, but we'll see. Seeing as this is a separate piece, maybe one day I can just kind of pull her out. We'll see. <laughs> but um, if I can get her roots straight into the media, then we're already winning at least 80% of what the orchid requires. The rest is then a problem with just something I can't change. But yeah, so let me work on this support and show you what I've been thinking of. And see the leaves here of a new growth? I would like that to be up a little bit more. And you know, the garden center has little cages and things like that. Well, I'm not going to purchase one of those because the leaves aren't that strong. I really only just need like a wire that goes in and around. So thinking to get the wire into the pot, yay deep, and then creating a circle around something like that. If I can't edit out all the scooter noises, I do apologize. Yay! You see where I'm getting at? I need a stronger wire, but it's all I've got to work with at the moment. So work with it, Nina. <laughs> well, um, kind of, sort of. But, you know, it's a little bit crude. <laughs> Let me take you back a bit. <laughs> it's a little bit crude, but it serves its purpose for when new growths come. I can sort of, you know, support the leaves. Uh, we got some more work to do, but you get my drift. I think, I hope. <laughs> Come sa. It's gonna be okay for me for now. I'm just gonna let her rest a little bit. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I would, oh, I would love to fuss with the wire more, but I don't want to. It's okay. Stop while you're ahead. Otherwise, this whole thing can go pear-shaped. <laughs> now she's got plenty of water in her pot. For the time being, I'm leaving it that way. She can handle it. The roots, after all, are only up here. So if she's still submerged in water, that's great. That's what she needs. We've been rather radical. And she is now going to go and sit with my Kimbilianum so that the breeze can air her out at the base. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you. If you've watched this video, I appreciate it so, so much. Good to have you here. And as always, let me know that you're here in the comments. I love chatting with you. Have yourself a fabulous day stay on that one condition though please that you stay safe take care bye <laughs>